Hello, hello, hello. This is Carl A. Smith, a.k.a. Dr. Cash, coming to you with our weekly stock market analysis for the week of April the 26th. Wow, the year is moving forward. 2020. Very aggressive movements in all major indices this last week being driven with some historic, historic movements in our oil commodity sector. We don't necessarily converse about oil too much. However, we've seen almost a 50% decline in oil over the last two weeks, which is unheard of in regards to contract prices. And we also did see negative prices in their most recent futures contract expiration, which has never been seen before. So we are in uncharted territory in a lot of our major markets. And this has caused some large indecision that we'll see across the board in all of our major indices with both the open and the close coming in this week almost on top of each other which showcases some very clear indecision between the bulls and the bears at this key level if you take a look at and we'll showcase that in a few seconds we have almost reached 50 percent from our most recent all-time highs to our major sell-off that we saw uh, going into the uh, u.s implications of the coronavirus so this is something that the bulls have definitely stepped in to try to bring us back. However, the bears are looking to step back in over the next few weeks to try to try to maintain control. And as you can see, just the overall percentage up and down this past week has been very, very close with the outlier is the Russell continuing to showcase bullish nature as the US continues to pass additional stimulus bills to help kickstart the U.S. economy that has been significantly impacted by the coronavirus. I believe we've approached uh, upwards of 24 million U.S. Uh, residents filing for unemployment for the first time over the last two to three weeks. A so pretty impactful type movement and we're seeing some clear indecision in all of our major indices with a little bit of a bright spot uh, on our NASDAQ as we have reached just greater than our 50% retracement, but at the same time, as we are knee deep, hot and heavy in our earnings season, specifically this week, there's a lot of tech heavy names that are being introduced this week for their overall earnings report. So this week is gonna be a very key week for us, and we'll dive into the charts momentarily to kind of highlight these things, but we do wanna initiate some additional caution that this could be a very pivotal week, albeit bullish or bearish. Uh, our tendency is slightly more so on the bearish side, and we'll tell you exactly why, but this could be something that we do want to watch as we are trying to retrace back up towards our some of our all-time highs. So we'll jump right in. Uh, this week is going to be a good bit of fun, and also, if you like what we are providing to you please don't hesitate to provide a comment and certainly hit the like button that allows us to continue to provide this type of information to you so don't hesitate to subscribe hit the like button and if you feel that you're learning something or if you're not learning anything don't hesitate to leave us a comment as we jump right into our s p 500 first as always and we'll jump right into our s p 500 as always as you can see we are closing in this past week at 282.97, which is approximately 65 points above our most recent low. So we have significantly retraced a, a vast portion of our overall move from our lows coming into this week here. And we are pulling right into value on the weekly. As always, we start off with our weekly charts. And you can see that we're pretty much close to our 50%. And we have seen a little bit of a pullback as we started this week. As we shared in our intro, we have seen some correlation between S&P 500 and a major sell-off across oil. But toward the latter part of the week, the bulls stepped in very significantly as we came in and touched our value area low on the weekly and have seen some very aggressive bulls stepping in and, and pushing us with a large range of just short of 15 points that has allowed us to have some major indecision on where we're gonna go forth within the remainder part of this month and then certainly as we step into May, 
the traditional mindset uh, could or could not be, depending on where we are from a, a economic perspective, the, the adage is sell in May and go away as a lot of our New York City traders will begin to initiate their summer plans. However, as we continue to shelter in place in the United States and majority of the countries across the globe, that may or may, may not come to fruition this particular trading year. Now, just to kind of give you a little bit, a bit of a visual of, of where we are, we'll do a quick Fibonacci to kind of showcase that we are just above our 50% line, but we've tapped right into a major moving average that has caused us to kind of traverse and potentially go sideways to downward moving forward. Now, all of that could be uh, out the window given some of the news that we do anticipate coming out of our earnings season. But as you can see here, this last week's close relatively on top of each other. And this is a very visual chart pattern for those that are strong in technical analysis showcasing just what we've started off conversing about is indecision between the bulls and the bears. Now, we don't necessarily typically look at our daily in detail, but it will give you a little bit of an indication of where we are and how we have continued to butt up to this major trend line where we see a touch here, a touch here, and then two touches back to back on Thursday and Friday. Now, as we look into this upcoming week, we do anticipate potentially what we call a look above and fail is if we open up bullish uh, coming into Sunday evening on the futures and then certainly Monday onto the broader market for this ETF, some type of action pushing up and then potentially pushing right back down into range. Now, if that does happen, we do have a target of 272, which is our value area low on the weekly chart as an area of potential confluence. If the bears have the ability to take control moving forward. Now that is a big if, because there is a very solid momentum. Moving forward, if we step back to the weekly chart, you can see that we have had some very solid and consistent movement of price week over week coming off of that 218 low just a short few weeks ago and continue up. Now, as something that we always showcase in, in every video seems like that we talk about is, is kind of this uh, in this case, kind of a uh, bull trap, but also kind of a bear flag. So we have this continuation pattern downward, the bull stepping in at a key support level, in this case 218, but then potentially continue on downward here. Now, if that is something that we do look at, we do anticipate over the next few weeks, some increased selling to potentially retest this 218. Um, we don't necessarily want to call full bearish, but our bias going into this week is kind of sideways to down and we'll showcase that with some correlation across the other major indices if we shift over to the NASDAQ, which has been the most bullish out of all your major indices coming in very aggressively and moving just that much faster as well as order of magnitude greater from a Fibonacci perspective that we've closed in above that 38 percent realm with some solid momentum to try to push it back up toward the 230 area where we have seen a gap that has not been filled so the auction process within the market does not like to have prices that are un auction now one thing that could potentially put a, a little stymie in that is we have seen a, a nice doji here that indicates some solid indecision as we stated previously but at the same time, to some degree, these past weeks have, have led us into a, a nice inside day, an inside week, excuse me, where we are moving into some type of a wedge pattern. So over the next week on the NASDAQ, we will potentially see some very aggressive moves, albeit upward or downward. Now this could be magnified given that we have a number of major tech names that are reporting over the next few weeks, this week, uh, led from a visibility perspective, is Google, AMD, Pepsi. We also have majors from Tesla, Microsoft, Boeing, General Electric, Amazon, Twitter, Apple. So these are a number of major names on the tech side that could cause us to push and, and come up to this 230 area, 225 area to kind of close out the gap on the NASDAQ now, conversely, if earnings are to be negative, we do anticipate some type of movement back into range 
and allow ourselves to kind of follow suit with, with the rest of the majors as pushing back down into range. Now with the NASDAQ, which is moving in a total opposite type momentum from the broader market, given the potential movement from some of the major tech names to push us that much higher on their earnings, we do want to kind of call us a slight bullish skew on the NASDAQ as we move forward. Now, anything can happen, as we always know within the market, that anything can happen, and that's something that we do want to kind of watch out for, and letting things kind of unfold and adjust to what our, the market is showcasing to us versus what we anticipate and look for some type of confirmation bias. So we don't want to come in too skewed, but we can only showcase what the chart is telling us. Now we'll move on to the Russell. Now we'll move on to the Russell. Now, what we've seen on the Russell is very similar to what we've seen on the S&P 500 is very aggressive price movement upward over the last several weeks. And we do see some type of consolidation moving forward over the last three weeks here where we do anticipate some type of bounce, albeit very aggressively upward or very aggressively downward, given that we're coming into a, a nice wedge or a nice uh, pennant type pattern and we're butting up to our nine week moving average. So this could be some type of resistance that we do see on the Russell to kind of showcase a very typical pattern that we talk about is kind of this ABC up and down. Now, if additional stimulus comes from the US and out of DC, we could see some type of movement with a break above this 125 area to kind of continuation up to 137 over the next few weeks as we bump up to our 20 week moving average. So there is an opportunity there to take a potential bullish type movement on the Russell given a lot of additional influence coming out of DC to help stimulate the economy. Now all of that could go out of the window given, uh, as we just previously stated on the NASDAQ, a number of key names have large operations and large employment in the United States. This could push us back to retest uh, at least this past week's low coming in at 114 so that could be an opportunity to take a, a nice short on the Russell but our bias is probably on, on the Russell to kind of move in a, in a sideways type for, format and if we do break below this past week's low our next target would be this previous week's low coming in at that 114 level now if we do breach that uh, we do anticipate a target of potentially retesting uh, the century figure and even if we break this larger trend line here at the bottom retesting our, our most recent lows of 9570 <clears throat> so a Russell we do have an alert that if we do break above 126 this could be a bullish pattern for us just from our technical analysis but we are holding fast to our overall skew that given that there is no vaccine and given that the numbers of the coronavirus are continuing to increase albeit at a slower velocity but they are still continuing to have major impacts to the economy and some of those things are not necessarily even seen so the bias is still to the downside but in regards to when it will continue to push to the lower side that's undetermined so our bias if we do want to call a direction on the russell is sideways to down coming into this coming week and then potentially into subsequent weeks. Now we don't necessarily look at the Dow, but there's something that we do want to kind of call out because it just maps right into that overall theme that we have <clears throat> for the overall market. Again, <clears throat> a number, excuse me, a number of our major indices have closed on a doji for this week, but what we've seen with the Dow on the weekly chart is this classic look above coming into value and then pushing back down below value and then closing below value so when you're doing your technical analysis one rule of thumb is always look at the closes of that individual time frames auction and if that is above or below some of your key levels that is a somewhat of an indication or an increased probability of what could take place moving forward now also, if we dive in just on the Dow only, we'll take a look at the daily and zoom in. There is confluence there that kind of this back and forth movement around value area low and 
showcasing additional indecision back and forth traversing this horizontal line coming in at uh, roughly 236.40 on the Dow. So we do anticipate some type of movement. And if we can break below this range, we do see some potential downward pressure if we kind of showcase a little bit of a trend line and, and see where we potentially have broken it back a number of days ago. So we do have some upside targets. If the Dow continues to showcase some bullish nature, we do have some upside targets that potentially could bring us up to the 252 level. And if that is something that is something that is seen, we could over the next few weeks or so traditionally push back up to 268, $270 level with the Dow. Now, my hypothesis is that we will continue to kind of showcase this downward pressure and potentially move back into range. Now, there isn't a lot of support. If we do break below, certainly our weekly low of this past week, that is going to be a very solid bearish signal for us. So our bias for the Dow, if anything, if we jump back to the weekly chart, would be again sideways to down if we kind of showcase some additional selling pressure. So we do want to watch and keep ourselves nimble. As always, if you like what we are saying to you and I'm sharing with you, please don't hesitate to subscribe to our channel as well as hit the like button. But we also love comments. And we do this out of uh, our overall goal is to try to increase knowledge of the overall stock market to help create generational wealth, but at the same time, look for opportunities to create certain amounts of income potentially. So our, our information is just that, is for educational purposes, uh, but hopefully you are gleaming something from our videos and pass them on to your friends and family. We love those types of friends and family type connections. So as always, uh, it's your money and it's under your control. Be safe, be careful, stay inside, and we'll see you on the other side. Take care.